Welcome back, everyone. Today, I'm going to show you my favorite way to tie up stinger hooks. Uh, obviously, there's lots of ways to, to do stingers. If you just look around on YouTube, you'll find all sorts of videos on how to do stinger hooks. Uh, but this is my preferred method, and it gives, uh, gives one distinct advantage when jigging for walleye in the Detroit River that I'll go over towards the end of this video. One of the great things about this particular stinger is that you just need a couple of cheap items. Uh, first, you're going to need uh, a stinger hook. Uh, I like to use treble hooks. I think a lot of people do, but I do know some people that use single hooks. So whatever your preference is there, um, you know, that's what you should go with. Um, you're going to need a length of line, um, probably about a foot long, uh, just to give you some extra to work with. And then the item that we're going to use to cinch the stinger hook down to your main hook is a bead. And the bead needs to have a hole in it that's roughly twice the diameter of your uh, line, maybe slightly more than that, but uh, not much more than that. Um, I'll show you why in a minute. And the nice thing about the bead is that they come in all sorts of shapes and sizes and colors. So um, you can get, uh, should be able to find the right size for the line that you're wanting to use. And then you can select colors that can sort of match your jig and plastics presentation. Um, and then if you don't want a color at all, you can always just go with a clear bead. And the other thing you're going to need is a jig that will allow you to tie consistent lengths of line for your stinger hooks. Um, if you watch YouTube videos on stingers, this is a common method that's used. Uh, a couple of nails punched through a scrap piece of wood. Um, for the size baits we like to use in the Detroit River, two and a half inches is about the right length. You could vary that a little longer, a little shorter if you'd like, whatever, whatever your preference is. Uh, but something like what you're seeing here is, is what you want to go for. So now that we've got our materials together and our jig ready to go, uh, we can start to tie the, uh, the stinger hook. Um, we're going to start by just tying a simple knot uh, to the hook itself. I like to use a Palomar knot. That's what I'm tying here. Um, pretty simple, strong knot uh, to terminate any sort of tackle uh, to a line. Um, don't do what I'm doing right here, though, and that's cinching it down without wetting the line. Uh, always, always wet the line before you cinch it down, uh, particularly with mono. It, it will deteriorate the line um, and, and make that knot very weak if you don't. So then when you're done, clip your tag end, and you're ready to move on to the next step of making the loop at the other end of the stinger. So now that we've got the knot tied, we're going to run the tag end of the line through our bead and then back through our bead again from the same side so that we form a large loop like you're seeing here with the tag end uh, just sort of hanging free. Next, we're going to attach the stinger hook to the jig. We're going to place the uh, hook around the right side nail and then the loop that we formed through the bead around the nail on the left. And then we're going to take that tag end and pull it tight, sort of cinch that bead down fairly close to the nail. It, it doesn't have to be right on there. The, the beauty of this rig is that the, the, the lead going to the hook will always be able to slide through the, uh, through the bead. So the next step is that we're going to make a uh, knot in the tag end of the line. Just a simple overhand knot is all we need. And this is the reason that the bead diameter needs to be slightly larger than two diameters of line, because we want this knot, once it's cinched down, to not be able to pass back through that bead. Um, so that's why the, the hole in the bead is important. Uh, then we're going to use something like a, a small needle, or in this case, I'm using a bobbin from a fly tying kit. Not, not a bobbin, I'm sorry, a pick. And uh, we're going to use that to slide the overhand knot right down to the bead to cinch it down so that we have a nice small loop coming out of the bead and over that left nail. Uh, and then we just trim our tag, and that's it. Um, we've got a completed stinger hook that's uh, ready to go. And finally, we can take that new stinger hook and put it on our line. And um, here's where the uh, added bonus of the bead comes in. Um, by making the, the rig in the way that we did, um, you can easily cinch it down as you just saw. But if you want to take it off, that bead gives you a little something to grab onto to pull back and loosen up the cinch and just slide it right back off the jig. And where I have found this to be uh, uh, of, a, of an advantage is when you're tipping your jig with live minnows. Um, as you know, those minnows, you put them on there, and um, after a few strokes of that jig, um, it loosens up uh, on, the, on the jig head, and oftentimes it will slip off of there pretty easily. Um, so what I like to do is, after I've put my minnow on, then I put my stinger hook on. And, um, you know, if I need to replace my minnow, it's really quick and easy to pop the stinger back off there and put a new minnow on. But by putting the stinger hook on after the minnow, it 
prevents the minnow from sliding up and off of that hook. Um, that doesn't mean that the minnows won't come off. I mean, obviously, after a time, they're going to wear out, and you're probably going to tear a hole through their lip, and, and, and they're going to fall off an anyway. Uh, but I've just found that uh, this method keeps them on there much, much longer and uh, gives you much more time with uh, that minnow on your bait, uh, give you an opportunity to, to, to get a fish. And as always, if you enjoyed this video, please hit that like button and consider subscribing to our channel. Thanks for watching.